uh, okay, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, happy New Year to you all, it's uh, five days later. But yeah, uh, today we have uh, our intro to mobile development workshop, which will be conducted, we're teaching the framework Flutter, which is a cross-platform dev, cross development framework. Uh, and we have Joshua from Google, who will be conducting the workshop. Google is, Flutter is Google's framework, so I cannot imagine anyone else better to conduct the workshop. So he's a full stack software engineer at Google, currently working on Google Pay. Uh, so I mean, if you have bugs to report, you can ask him. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. But yeah, he has dabbled in Flutter development and backend integration work and is looking forward to sharing in this workshop. Uh, that's all I have, Joshua. Uh, over to you. Cool. So I'll share my screen. Uh, all right. So uh, hello, everyone. And uh, this is actually my first time uh, doing a sharing session on Flutter. So uh, do stop me anytime if you have questions or, uh, you know, uh, you're stuck, right? So uh, as uh, introduced, uh, we will be looking at Flutter today and uh, we'll be using a very uh, hands-on approach to uh, build a very uh, simple mobile app. All right, so what is Flutter? So Flutter is a uh, framework, if you like, or an SDK to be exact, that, that was created by Google and it's open source and it's currently used to develop uh, cross-platform applications. So um, for example, uh, companies like, so these are the companies or uh, the products that use uh, Flutter to develop the app. So uh, as you can see, uh, Google Pay is one of them and Google Pay is actually one of the first to use Flutter within Google. So it's pretty awesome. And uh, you have uh, other companies like Alibaba, uh, Tencent, even ByteDance, I believe, uh, that used um, Flutter for their work. So as I mentioned, it's a cross-platform uh, framework. So uh, you just need to write one single piece of code and you can run it on say different OS like Android OS or even on the web. So the programming language used is Dart. And uh, I believe that um, most of you are new to this, but uh, don't worry. It's a pretty uh, easy language to learn. And yep, in Flutter, everything is about widgets and you'll see why later. And, and yep, so this is what we will be building today. It's a very simple uh, name generator, as you can see on the right. So basically you have a list of name suggestions and it's a list view and you can tap on each of the list item and then you can toggle the uh, favorite button on the right. And then of course, there's another screen which uh, uh, store all your safe suggestions. So uh, do refer to this repo. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have the link to this. Uh, could we share it to them? Yeah, can you just post the link on the chat? I don't think I have the link. Uh, or I can handle it for you, if that's okay. All right, sure. Let me just uh, quickly do it. Um, I oh, it's here. All right, so that's the link. Uh, so do refer to that link uh, as and when you're stuck. And let's continue the presentation. All right, so uh, in that repo, you should see uh, the uh, solutions for each of the step. So for example, if you are at step two, I would have uh, commented the section, uh, the, the section for the changes for this step, and then you can just copy them over uh, to try it out. So I do encourage you, all of you to uh, follow along and code uh, together with me. And that's what makes things fun, right? All right. So step one, uh, let's go to uh, uh, dot, dot dev. I think you're not sharing your screen. Yeah. All right, cool. Do you see my screen now? 
Yep, all good. All right, cool. Sorry about that. So let me just backtrack a little. Yep, so you can refer to the repo, this repo to be exact, for the step-by-step uh, -step solution. And, and uh, do follow along, yeah. Sorry, I'm working on just a single screen, so it's a bit hard. Um, yeah, so uh, step one, uh, uh, let's all head up over to dartpad.dev. So it's this dartpad.dev and uh, click on new pad and select Flutter and we create an entire uh, new code. So dartpad is, uh, it's a very convenient, uh, conveniently available uh, online editor, which allows us to run Dart or Flutter code and generate the output directly. So in this case, um, we can try running this code over here. Yeah, you should see a uh, hello world on the uh, UI output on the right panel. So basically uh, this hello world is uh, rendered in Flutter so technically this is like a Flutter app already. So I guess uh, we are done here, right? Since we have a mobile app already. Uh, of course, I'm joking. Yeah, so um, so you can verify by clicking run and you should see uh, the UI render on the right. So some observations here. Number one, everything is a widget. Uh, and so as you can see, uh, over here, we have something called my app. So that's the uh, top level widget, like that's the, the app. And so here is a widget. And inside here, there's like a lot of uh, compositions of uh, other widgets. And eventually we are calling to my region, which is defined over here. So this itself is another stateless widget. So in Flutter, everything is a widget, almost everything is a widget and the main uh, responsibility of a widget is to provide a build function. So what the build function does is that uh, it basically describes to the framework um, how a widget looks like and how to display it via composition. So by composition, I mean they can have children widgets. So in this case, uh, my app kind of uh, is composed of all these widgets and eventually we have the uh, my widget as well. So in Flutter, uh, things are pretty uh, declarative. So as you can see in this like little function over here, the UI is a function of the state. So the UI is just how the screen looks like, the layout of the screen. And the function is the build method that we looked at. And then the state is just the state that the application is in, which we will uh, delve into further uh, later. So the next thing, uh, next important thing in Flutter is build context. So if you realize in build, we take in a build context and you will see, see this almost everywhere. So basically this context um, kind of tells the framework where this widget is. So previously um, we mentioned about uh, widgets being built uh, using composition. So it, eventually we will have something called a widget tree. So in this widget tree, uh, for a particular widget, for example, in this case, this my widget, this context is actually saying where this widget is in the widget tree. All right. So yeah, it's just where that widget is in the widget tree. And um, over here, in the starter app, we also have something called the uh, scaffold. So the scaffold is actually a, uh, a, a, a an available, readily available uh, widget, which provides you like basic things like an app bar and a body. And we'll be using this later. And of course, last but not least, if you realize, uh, we have something called the material app here. So I believe some of you might have known about uh, material design. So material design is just a uh, standard uh, visual design language that is used uh, by Google to build uh, apps that look, you know, standardized across different uh, platforms. 
All right, so um, let's move on to the next um, slide. So as mentioned before, everything in Flutter is rigid. So there are two main types of rigid. Uh, one is stateless, one is stateful. So for stateless rigid, you can think of it as something that is static that won't change over time. So it is like a constant, right? So for example, a piece of text or an icon that doesn't change. As for stateful widget, uh, you can think of it as something that's dynamic that can respond to user interaction or listen to events and the appearance would change accordingly. So for example, if you have a text view and the viewer can, uh, and the user can um, uh, input text into that text field. That text field itself is a stateful widget. So same goes for uh, forms and checkbox. So uh, as the name suggests, stateless any stateless widget that we create, we will need to subclass this stateless widget uh, class. For stateful widget, we will subclass the stateful widget class. And in stateful widget, we also have something called the state object, which stores basically all the state data. All right, so uh, now we will start to uh, build our app proper. So uh, we will now create a, a stateful widget called the names. And then we will put this names widget to the home property of material app to show it. So uh, let's head over to the code. So uh, first of all, we'll just delete most of this stuff over here, which is not needed, right? So the material app, you can just leave with just a home. And um, in my region, uh, we can rename it. Uh, let's not do that. Uh, the, dark pad, the, the downside of the dark pad is uh, there's not a lot of uh, hot keys or whatnot. So we just need to uh, try to type it out. Um, there are a few questions on the chat, actually. A couple questions about Flutter. Okay, sure. Uh, where is it? I'm so sorry about that. Uh, Does Flutter also handle the back end or is it mobile development? Okay, so Flutter is a, a front end framework, right? So uh, basically it's to build the UI. Uh, apps made in Flutter only for uh, Android or does it? Yeah, so uh, Flutter can be built for both Android and iOS. That's why uh, we use it for that's one of the reasons why we use it for Google Play and Google. So like we don't need to maintain two different code bases. Hope that answers the questions. All right. Uh, do you still see my screen? Uh, yep. All right, cool. So uh, moving on. So uh, where were we? Okay, yeah. So we will create a name stateful widget to basically uh, define the UI. So um in I just type out while I talk. So we will need something called uh, a name state as well. So as mentioned just now, we every stateful widget will need a need to have a state uh, object. All right. So um if you use if you are using like Android Studio or any other better editor, offline editor. Uh, you should be able to generate this as a boilerplate. So, uh, but unfortunately, I don't know a better way to do it here. So I'll just try to uh, type everything out. Uh, all right. So, so in the state uh, class, we will define the build method that will um, that will uh, tell the framework how this uh, looks like. So over here, uh, for now, we will just return a size box dot string. So basically, what this does is um, we'll return nothing. It's a size box that is string to nothing, right? So it's an empty screen. Uh, so we will define the actual UI in the next step. So, but uh, we will just set up this. Um, Mm-hmm. 
state names. Right, cool. So now we have defined a new stateful widget. So in this stateful widget, uh, there will, we need to override the uh, create state uh, method. So basically, this creates a state for this stateful widget. So that state is actually created uh, by, in this, by, by this class. And then this class will actually, this state class will actually handle the build function. So uh, we will just move up to the material app up here and set these uh, names as our uh, home screen, right? So let's run it. Yep, you shouldn't see anything because uh, like I said, uh, here we are returning a size box dot string so it's not rendering anything all right so this is working as, as, as expected don't worry right so um, um some observations here so we have uh, created a stateful widget and a state so what's the difference between the two uh the stateful widget uh is immutable so basically it cannot change and it can be rebuilt and replaced but the state is the one that will persist over the lifetime of the widget. So think about it this way, right? So if you have like a, a logic, a piece of logic or some state to store, you will want to st store it in a state object because that is the one that will persist, right? So most of the logic will reside here. And if you also realize that I uh, started, I prefixed this uh, name state uh, class with an underscore. So in that underscore means private modifier. So uh, that's just, um, a language syntax kind of thing. And we also have this uh, uh, arrow function. So this is basically just the usual one line, one liner or lambda function. All right, cool. Let's move on. So step three. Um, so now we will um, start to build the list of uh, name suggestion or the available names, and then we'll show them in a list, and uh, and we should be able to see something uh, after we complete this step. So, uh, I'm gonna cheat a little. Uh, I'm just going to go to my uh, repo and copy over this uh, something called the. Uh, available names. So this available names is just a list of uh, name suggestion that we want to show the user. So over here, uh, I am hard coding it because uh, for simplicity sake, right? So um, so we have this available names to be shown on in the app. And now we need to update this build function to actually build uh, the list view. So uh, here, like I mentioned before, we will use a scaffold, all right, and and we will define an app bar with the title uh, uh, let's name it a uh, name generator. Is that right? And if you realize, uh, we also have all this comma, trailing comma thing. So that is for um, uh, formatting. So uh, it's a it's a uh, good practice. It's good practice to put like trailing commas to basically make your code as readable as possible. So the indentation will look nice. Um, and then in the body of the scaffold, we will use uh, something called a list view, all right? And this view, and then this view will take in a list of children. So like I said before, we have uh, something called the composition uh, approach. So uh, a widget can take in uh, one or more children. And in this children, we will call this divide tiles of static function to, I'll explain more about that later, but here we are passing in the context. Okay, so how do we know what to pass in 
in. Uh, basically, you can go down to this documentation here, right? And you can see, oh, you need a build context and then you need a list of uh, tiles, right? So over here, uh, we need we will need like to return the tiles here. The tiles will contain the names. So uh, I would uh, build a uh, helper function over here to make things uh, clean. Uh, so let's create a build tiles helper function. I believe that here we might need to do a to list. Not wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. So let's define the helper function. So in the helper function, we will return a list of widgets, a list of tiles, which each of them is also a widget. So a list of widget, and we will build tiles. And what we'll do here is to uh, return. So now we will map uh, available names. Uh, we'll map available names to a tile, right? So each of the name. So here we are using lambda function again. Uh, each of the name will be mapped into a list tile. Uh, let's put a, and with the title. Uh, with the name as a title. So the available name will be shown as a title of the tile. And then you also can define like some style. So the style is basically like your CSS thing. Uh, so let's say we, we make the uh, font size to uh, 20, right? Something like that. And you can click format up here so that everything will be formatted nicely. Um, and here is complaining that uh, some error. Okay, so this is an iterable. So a map will return an iterable. So we will need to uh, convert it to a list because uh, we are returning a list here, right? So now we have this, um, we have updated this build method. So if we run it, um, yep, we should be able to see, you know, a list of available names. Uh, I'm not sure why my screen is not scrolling. Uh, let me just try to build again. Um, oops, let me see what I can do here. Yep, so uh, it's scrolling. All right, it's scrolling. And, um, and as you can see, this, uh, so, so let's explain a bit about the layout. So this entire thing is actually a scaffold. And then the top bar here is the app bar. It's this app bar here. And then see, we set the title to name generator. And then in the body, we have a list view. So this body and her body is a list view. And each of this list tile is built uh, in this helper function, built tiles from helper function. And then there you have it, right? So um, so this is, uh, this is a list of names that we are showing. Yeah, I think it'll be good to take some Let's questions at this point. My... Cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it'll be good to take questions once in a while because I, I think our audience isn't super. Yeah, there are a few questions already. Yeah. So I will pause for two minutes. Uh, and it would be good to take pauses. Okay. Um. So any questions? Like uh. Do we see widget as an object? Uh, yes. Uh, can you repeat what's the scaffolding? Yep. So um, everything in Flutter is a widget. So you can think about it as um, it's, a, it's uh, an object. 
uh, or you can think of it as a class, a, a blueprint to build an object. But um, everything is a widget in the sense that uh, the, u the view is a widget. Is a, is a widget. So just now, uh, the, uh, this view is a widget. And if you want to like have alignments, alignments could be a widget also. So for example, there's something called the center widget. So that basically center the children uh, with respect to its parents. And what's a scaffold? Um, a scaffold is a very available uh, widget, which gives you an app bar and a body. Uh, what state management approach does GPA use? Ah, that's a good question. Um, so in vanilla Flutter, we would use stateful widget and we will use state. And there's something called set state, which we will look, up, look, uh, look at later. But uh, we do have, in, in, in Google Pay, we do have our own uh, internal infrastructure. So we have like a framework built upon, our internal framework built upon Flutter as well. So um, you could do something similar to MVCs uh, by extending some of the uh, Flutter, Flutter functionalities. Yep. But over here, we will just look at a very, uh, basic state manage management approach. Yeah. Um, any more questions? I, I guess not. So let's move on. Cool. So, um, So some observations for this step is that um, this list view takes in a list of children. So it's essentially composing views uh, with more, uh, it's, a, it's a composition approach to UI building. And what this divide tiles does over here is to uh, take in a list of uh, this view at least tiles, and then you put these uh, dividers in between them, right? So it's just a convenient method. And, and I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory. All right, cool. Uh, moving on. So now uh, we have come to the fun part uh, is to add the uh, interaction to it. So this is where the stateful uh, state management uh, stuff come in. So here we will um, create in the state object or the state class, we'll create a set of safe names. So this is the set where we pull in all the names that were favorite that will mark as favorite, and then we will show it in another screen, right? So we need a set for this. Save names, and uh, let's just create a set of string for it. All right? And um, so in, I believe in build tiles, right? So build tiles is the one that is building the tiles for each of the name. So um, for each list tile, all right, if you look at the documentation, um, there's something called the trailing widget. So basically, trailing widget will just display things at the end of the list. So we, we will want that to display uh, the, uh, the heart shape icon or the favorite icon, right? So, so we'll use trailing widget here. Uh, we'll use the trailing property here. And, uh, and we'll display an icon. On, right, so uh, this icon is called the icons dot favorite. So icon is just another uh, class, 
uh, with all the uh, predefined icons available. And then you want to show it as a uh, red color. Um, yep. If we build it now, we should be able to see the icons already. However, if we tap on the list, uh, nothing will happen because there's still no logic to handle the tapping. So we are now adding the logic to handle taps, right? So um, basically, another property called on tap, which register um, callback. So we use a uh, lambda function again. And then we'll call a special method called set state. Set state is a very important uh, method when you're dealing with uh, a stateful widget or state management. Uh, we'll talk about this more about this later. So set state uh, in set state, uh, we will <clears throat> okay, before that we we need to check if um, we have restructured this a little bit because uh, it doesn't make sense for us to um, right. So cool. so now we will we will not use a lambda function for this tile anymore because uh, we need more than one statement. So here, we'll add in a check a boolean to check if uh, the current name is saved, right? So we'll just simply check if the safe names set contains um, this particular name. So far so good. And in on tap, we will check if the current name is saved, then we need to unsave it. So we will need to remove it from a uh, name. Otherwise, we we'll edit the save names. Right. So let's add a comma here. All right. Um, now it's complaining that this should be a cons. Okay. So what this on tap uh, callback does is it will call set state to the framework, notifying the framework that something has changed. You have to rebuild this uh, widget and the children. And inside this set state, we will check if this name is safe. If this name is saved, we unsafe it. If it's not safe, we save it, right? So apart from that, we also need to, so in order to show, in order to be able to toggle the uh, favorite icon, the favorite button, we will need to add some logic here as well. So we check if it's saved, then we show icons.favorite, otherwise, we will show something known as the icons dot favorite uh, favorite uh, border. So favorite border is uh, an unfilled version of the favorite, right? So in terms of color, if uh, if it is safe, we want to show it as red. If not, we will just uh, put the color as now. So we run this code. And why is it complaining? Invalid constant value, oh yeah. It's not a constant anymore, right? All right, so here we are seeing that everything starts out as unsafe, right? So the, uh, the uh, icon is like unfilled and gray and we tap on it, yep, it, it will toggle, right? So if we untap it, then it will, it will unsafe from the safe list. So this is step four. 
So we have added the save function. So uh, as mentioned just now, set state is something that you will want to pay attention to when you are doing uh, state, you are using stateful vision. So basically what it does, it, it, is, it notifies the framework that uh, some things has changed and uh, the sub the subtree the widget sub, this widget subtree has to be rebuilt. So for example, in our case, what has changed is uh, something has been saved and then it triggers a, a, a callback to the uh, uh, framework and the framework will rebuild the call the build function of the state of uh, we'll call this build function and then everything will be rebuilt and hence, uh, the UI is updated, as you can see on the right. And always, always make sure to call this method when state changes. Uh, and don't call the build method directly. The build method is only called by the framework, right? We don't call the build method directly. We call set, set state, and then um, the framework will handle um, some other things behind the scene before calling the build function. Uh, is there any questions so far? Yes. So, um, the question is, does a stateful widget re-render on every state change? Yes, a, state, a, a stateful widget or any widget will rebuild when set state is called. So set when set state is called, the entire subtree of widgets starting at this widget will be rebuilt, right? So it's a pretty, it could be expensive, so use it wisely. So you don't want to keep rebuilding your app over and over again. You don't want to, you want to rebuild at the lowest level as possible and not like the entire tree. Do we see it as each widget, if they are stateful, has its own state? And we can apply the methods as state state to update the state, where in the code does it? Uh, I'm not too sure about the, the last question. Where in the code does it initialize the state for each of them? Oh yeah, um, each each stateful widget will have a state. That's correct. So in fact, if you look at it. Um, uh, the the build method of the stateful widget is actually in the state object, not in the stateful widget itself, right? And yes, uh, the code will initialize. So there are some uh, you can override some of the uh, I think the init method, but uh, if you don't override it, uh, it will be called as is, right? So yeah, good question. Uh, Moving on. Cool. So, uh, step five. So now we, this is where the fun part comes in. So we will add a new screen to show the safe names. So here, uh, we will learn about navigating to another screen and building a stateless region. So previously we were using a stateful widget. Now we look at how to do a stateless region. <clears throat> cool. So let's start a new class. Uh, let's name it uh, safe name. So, so in like I said before, I can't emphasize this enough. Everything is a widget. So this new page is also a widget. So you name our class safe names, which extends stateless widget. widget. Right? So in this stateless widget, um, we will need to keep a, a local variable, right? So a local variable uh, and uh, class variable, instance variable. So um, we will need to take in a set of string. So this set of string is actually the, the set of uh, names that was saved. Uh, and let's name it uh, save names. 
All right. So here we will have to uh, define a constructor. So, and uh, I think it's safe names. Yep. So, um, something to note here. Um, there is a concept of a uh, constant constructor. If you are interested, you can read it up. But essentially, a constant constructor allows us to define a construct, a constant version of this class. Uh, create a, inst a, a instantiate a constant version of this class so that it's only built, it's only created once, uh, in every run. So um, that's just a good habit, right? To make things as constant as possible, and. Over here, this very weird looking thing is actually uh, a synthetic sugar, if you may, uh, provided by Dart. So basically what it does is it takes in the arg this argument and set, I'm sorry, I got, and, and, and set um, the argument value to stick names. All right, so now we have the constructor done and we will move on to the very important build method. All right, cool. All right, so um, this build uh, is going to look very similar to the build up there because we are just basically showing um, a list of tasks. So, I will just conveniently copy the entire scaffold down here. And then we'll rename this new screen to, let's say, safe names. All right. And, and here, we don't have built tiles anymore. But instead, we will just uh, uh, define a local variable of tiles. So basically, we will map each safe name uh well list tile. And as usual, the text will be name and and yep. So basically we are mapping safe names to tiles, to a, to a list of list tiles, and then we will show it here in the list view. Cool. So um, that's our new page. Very simple. So the question comes, how do we navigate there, right? So basically what we want to do here is to add in a trailing button in the app bar over here. So it's the usual hamburger icon. And then tapping on that will navigate us to the safe name page. So how do we do that? Um, so here in the home page, so uh, name state or names is the home page, right? So in the home page scaffold, the app bar of it, there's a title called name generator. So now we want to add something here. So there's actually something called actions. And these actions uh, will take in, uh, will, will, will render some buttons after the title and which will allow us to add some uh, interactivity to it. So over here, we will add in an icon button And icon would be the list icon. So it's the hamburger icon, right? And, and let, let's just render it here first. Um, uh, something is wrong. I see. We need to define an on press. Callback. So if you look at icon button, 
documentation. You need a on press function, which is required, right? So on press is just like the on tap callback, right? So on pressed, uh, uh, we'll just do nothing for now. Let's render it. All right, uh, it's hiding behind this debug uh, flag over here. So it's here, if you can see it. So uh, tapping on it won't do anything because on press is still empty. So now we want to do, what basically what we want to do is to put the navigation code in on press so we can navigate to the safe name page. So I will just, uh, I would just copy over the code uh, for the sake of time. Yep. So basically, in on press, we will use something called the navigator. So the navigator essentially manage a stack of uh, routes, or if you may, each route is just a screen or a page. So basically, navigator stop or a stack of the page, and then uh, there's a push function, push method that will push a page onto the stack to display it, right? So over here, navigator, so dot off context is actually getting the closest navigator to the current context, to the current location of this widget. So we look up the tree and we see, oh, there's a navigator, where's the closest navigator uh, to this location? And we get that navigator and then we'll push a page to it. So this page, is actually our safe name page, right? That is defined down here. And this safe name page is wrapped inside a material page route. So basically, this is just a wrapper, if, if you like, for a page, right? So if you run it, yep, uh, you should be able to navigate to this new uh, safe name page, right? And if we just save some names randomly and go to this page, it should render here. And if we remove, say, swipe wire and secure smarter, then it'll be gone, right? Yep, so that's basically uh, the app that uh, we, are, we, we are gonna build and we have finished building it. Yep, so... Um, some observations I have met, talk, talked about navigator and uh, at bar action. Yep, so at bar, we will take in a list of action, which will allow us to uh, display an array of widget to add some interaction to it uh, after the title in the app bar. And there you have it, a shiny new app. So I think I went a little, a little fast. So uh, we'll move on to q &A. Please ask me questions. Um, is there any question? Are uh, there questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or ask on the chat. Yep. If not, I have a question. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. So I was wondering, uh, th thanks for conducting this. I think it covers a lot of the core concepts of Flutter while not going too much into detail and that's great. But I was wondering if uh, our participants want to go and explore mm. Flutter more, what resources can they look at? So uh, I will send, there's actually pretty good uh, documentation on the official uh, Flutter site. Uh, let me just quickly get the link. So I think, I believe this is the one. And uh, let me see. Uh, and there are some cookbooks. Um, so there are some cookbooks. So this cookbook is pretty useful because uh, let's say if you want to uh, do an animation, then they'll tell you how to quickly set up an animation. If you want to uh, like basically set up a list or set up a form, 
then that there are some cookbook for it and then navigation as well so um and yeah so so this cookbook is pretty useful and there are also uh, some code maps over here uh, in fact our app is actually adapted from the code lab just that uh, we do it on that pit that pad instead of setting up the environment on your local machine because um so there are some little adaptations here and there because that pad don't support external packages so um yeah i think these are a good starting point cool yeah thanks so much yeah. are there any other questions If not, I have another question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, participants feel free to ask. I mean, I'm just wondering about a few things. So uh, a lot of them are can have attending this workshop because they're interested in developing a mobile app for the hackathon, right? Uh, I was wondering if you have any tips for how to come up with ideas for some some Flutter app, if possible, or any mobile app, maybe. Yeah. Ideas. <laughs> I mean, or I mean, tips, tips for coming up with ideas in, in ways. I, I, I'm pretty sure no one wants to steal your ideas here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm a good executor. <laughs> I don't usually generate ideas, but um, I would say uh, for hackathon project, avoid the cliche. So uh, I've seen, uh, so basically I, I volunteered to be one of the, I forgot which hackathon was it but i was a judge for one of the hackathons like last year and yeah there, there's a lot of cliche app like you know a to-do list uh a reminder app or like um my advice is um for hackathon um you don't need like very slick ui or designs you need a function app. that's what you need and what needs to be unique is the idea, right? Like what you're bringing to the table, like how are you improving a process or how are you helping people to solve problems? Yep. Uh, oh, I think there's a question. Based on my experience, what are the pros and cons when using Flutter compared to other frameworks like for mobile app? Yep. What are the kinds of app using Flutter to develop? Um, Flutter is, is easy to learn. I, I, I would like to think so. Uh, it's easy to start, like uh, it's suitable for hackathon because it's not like the, the, the learning curve is not like super steep, like you, you need like days to look at documentations. Um, another thing is um, Flutter is very well documented. All the source code is available. So you can basically, when you code out, you can reference the source code and look at how things are done under the hood uh, and pros. Um, coming from me is not that reliable, right? Because I'm using Flutter on my own, but um, cons. Uh, yep, cons, uh, some cons would be uh, uh, one thing is state management, right? So you, let's say you have multiple widgets in different part of the widget trees. How do you communicate the state between the different widgets? So uh, there are actually uh, many ways to do that. So there's something called the uh, provider package. So provider basically will just put the state high up in the tree and then all the sub three widgets can query this state. So that's essentially what it does. So there are some libraries that are available uh, to make state management easier. What kind of apps would you recommend using Flutter? Basically every, every kind of app, right? if you can think of anything under the sun, basically like uh, as long as you have enough time and effort, you should be able to do it. Yeah, this shouldn't be a problem. Um, other frameworks. So 
other frameworks, for example, if you're looking at say Android, Android is very, I would say is very, uh, uh, so, so, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Flutter is very decorative, right? Like you just put in a state, the build function is a function and then it comes out, a UI will come out. But in other frameworks like Android or whatnot, things are pretty imperative and you have to handle a lot of life cycles issue as well. There are feedback link and then I will stop the recording and if you don't no. mind, you can answer the other questions sure, after sure. that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, no cool. uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks everyone for attending the workshop and thanks Joshua for conducting it. I think, like I said, I think it covered a lot of the core concepts of Flutter, uh, which is great while not going into too much detail. So if you could help us fill, fill the feedback form uh, by scanning the QR code or uh, going to the link, it'll be great. We take our feedback very seriously and I think it will help us improve the next iteration of similar workshops uh yeah so please feel free to uh give us feedback uh i will leave this on um and i will be ending the recording here uh if you want to ask more questions to joshua and joshua doesn't mind uh, staying then yeah you can just stay okay i'm ending the recording now thank you